Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in just a minute, just waiting for SLP to log on. Oh my goodness, it's five o'clock. <laughs> hey, this is Watch Me Work. I'm SLP. Title Watch Me Work. The me in the title refers to you. And this is where we hang out and allow you to get some work done and allow you to ask me questions about your creative process. That's all we do. I was just thinking, maybe I need to tell people what this is all about. We've been doing this show for about 12 years. We started in the lobby of the public theater. Um, where we would do it live, rain or shine, come crowds or come not so big crowds. And we moved onto Zoom during the first days of the pandemic where we did it days and days and days in a row. And now we're once a week again. So here we are. What we do is we work for 20 minutes by the timer and then we all work together silently or with our mutes on. And then I invite you to ask me questions about your creative process. And if you should have a question about your creative process after the allotted work time, Lolly will tell you how to get in touch. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So if you have a question, um, if you're in Zoom with us, you can ask questions by clicking on the raise your hand button, which should be in either the reactions or participants tab, um, likely on the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop. Um, if you have any trouble finding it, you can send me a message um, in the private chat and I will do my best to help you. Um, if you're watching the stream with us on HowlRound, feel free to send us your questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram accounts or via Watch Me Work's Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. So that's how you ask a question. All right. And before we get started, we will, of course, say thank you to the Public Theater and HowlRound for making this universe possible. That's right, Mo. Hands in the air. Um, and so uh, here we go.
No, I'm not. 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 I'
take take things away from Nancy. Um, let's see. Um, I don't <laughs> think you I don't think you did anything stupid, wrong, dumb, or ridiculous by considering your audience when you're writing an article. Now, what I would say is keep sending it out though. I mean, if you only send it to ARF or wh whatever, right? I mean, it sounds like it would fit really well with you. Have you ever heard of Tricycle Magazine? Tricycle Magazine? Sure. Okay, and Parabola. And, you know, Buddhist magazines on meditation, they don't mind when you talk about death and dying. You know, so, <laughs> so I mean, you know, maybe do send it to more magazines that are actually might be truly interested in um in your your wonderful work you know the, the only thing wrong that you can possibly do is to stop sending it out there that's I, hear you. That's I hear it. that's very good yeah yeah i mean i i didn't come to the team to ask them last week because i was on I went into the how round and I, I, I couldn't get in. I could somehow I couldn't figure out how to ask a question. So oh, okay. in future, I will ask before. Uh, no, thank but, you. But no worries. But yeah, keep sending it out there. And um, uh, yeah, and I, I, I mean, if you were sending it to a magazine, let's think of, you know, I don't know, women's health or something like that, you know, maybe you you include more things that are focused on women and people who identify as women. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not a bad thing. It's just, it's it's an article. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's bad. Okay. Yeah. But, Thank you. Well, yeah, Thanks. sure, sure. Oh, it looks like Emma has a question. Hey, Emma. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, well, I first wanted to say thank you for the answer that you gave to my question like a couple weeks ago because i've decided that i should have characters who want things in my plays um <laughs> that feels more interesting Yay, i'm um, so glad <laughs> yeah <laughs> but my question for today is um how do you decide for like any given piece of something like what the scope should be um and like sort of like what form it should take because I have a play that I had like a first draft written and then I wrote a second draft and now I'm writing the third draft and I thought that I knew kind of what it was um but then I just randomly was like I need to add six more characters and it's like the rest of the play was um like kind of like big and surreal and weird and now I'm adding this like six character thing that's more naturalistic. And it feels like maybe it should just be an entirely different play, but I don't really want it to be. And I'm like, I could, there is like a way to make it work. But at what point do I say like, I can't keep adding elements to this or like, it could just be like this ever expanding thing that has like a million different scenes and different universes and but I don't I don't know like when to cut it off and say like I'll mm -hmm. save these ideas for another play mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so why are you adding the six additional characters why? I just felt compelled to I like what do you mean I, compelled I, talk to me compelled like 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 I I don't really I'm kind of not feeling what I'm writing and so what what is the compulsion what does it come yeah it come from so the play as it was before um it was like all of the characters are kind of these like big archetypes like mm -hmm. these like exaggerated cartoonish kind of characters mm -hmm. and someone told me like it felt kind of Brechtian which was not like it was interesting but not exactly what I was going for like I wanted kind of more of like an emotional core to it um and then also I was like I feel like having teenage girls in here would be an interesting way to explore sexuality and so I really wanted to just put some teenage girls in there who are having like really kind of normal honest conversations about sex um like it made like the it it like made sense as I was doing it, but now it feels like I don't know when to stop adding things. And right, I hear you. I hear you. So what if, what if um you took the six characters out, uh, including the teenage girls, gave the teenage girls their own play, you know, and 
really look at the the initial play you're you're working on writing and get it to be what you want it to be yeah like do the work you know it's like it's like i would you know for example you, you meet people and they go oh i'm dating this really wonderful person but they're not really what i want and they're kind of all over the place and I'm, so i'm gonna date someone else while i'm dating them right too, because you know you know i mean you never know right and then That's what it feels like. they're dating like seven right it feels like that they're dating like seven or eight people and that might be all fine and well but at the end of the day you just get exhausted and you don't really get your work done right, right? so instead of just going I'm going to focus on this one relationship that I have and I'm going to see if I can, if it, there's something there, you know? Yeah. Um, Brechtian, someone's saying it's Brechtian. Um, in my experience of the plays of Bertolt Brecht, they're very emotional. I don't know what Brecht yeah. they've seen, but I see, you know, Mother Courage when the deaf, when the heart, deaf daughter is beating her drum on the roof and it's like, oh my God, it's, absolutely beautiful i mean yeah. it's a great scene they're beautiful scenes in, in in his plays um maybe they've seen really intellectualized versions of those plays but they're great plays so if you want more emotion in your plays don't like look here's a whole another six characters and they're gonna be <laughs> yeah. emotional you know right i mean that's like yeah. having like an affair when you really don't need to have an affair you just need to focus on your partner and go how can we work this out right know, I, I mean for, I forgive the you know the, the relationship thing but but so look at your characters from your original from your first from that first play you're talking about how can we make it more emotional or whatever right. you want how can we make it more you know yeah right? and then draw a circle around the teenage girl play and give them their own play okay right and then the other ones are they all all the extra people are teenage girls or they're the six characters are all teenage girls yeah all the extras are teenage girls so give them their own play okay they want their okay. own play okay or they're gonna hate you if you like stick them in another play because like you know, <laughs> yeah. they're supposed to be like the fluffy like cute sexy shit i mean come on. <laughs> yeah. right right yeah thank you that You're yeah welcome. that's welcome. good great advice. question thank you thank you, thank great you. Question. who's next thank you so much emma um it looks like kimmy d is up hi hi hi, hi everybody hi slp thank you hi, for kimmy. taking the question and thanks for being here um i didn't have a question till emma <laughs> the question so thanks emma <laughs> I have been working on this play of mine for quite a while, and I thought it was done. Um, it is called Waste Management. It's because, you know, from New Jersey, what else would a Jersey girl call her play, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's loosely based on my life in that the protagonist has uh, childhood sexual trauma. It's a very dark comedy. She and on stage oh, you froze oh it looks like you're freezing a little oh, bit sorry oh i think you're back hello you're frozen kimmy i think hello, hello. ah shit i can hear you we can hear you though but you're not moving you're very still oh you can hear me cursing good <laughs> yeah maybe maybe try turning your camera off that might help Oh, you're back. I think you're back. I think. No, no. Yeah, maybe turn your camera. Am I on. back? Am I moving? Yes, okay. you're moving, but maybe. Okay, there you go. Maybe turn your camera off so it won't overload. Can you hear me now? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, um, it's called waste management, and the protagonist is on the stage, uh, and there's other characters on the stage, but they're really. They are her uh, pedophile, the uh, childhood imaginary friends that she had growing up, and uh, Reflection, which is uh, an actor behind a frame, and that's her talking to herself through the mirror. Uh -huh. And so uh, she's basically sorting out all these people, trying to figure out who she is, where does she go, how does she survive, she's in her 50s. There is an element 
you know, it's kind of the same old tired arc where she starts out, uh, you know, as many of us who have been traumatized do on drugs and alcohol, and then she's not doing that at the end. And I spoke to a person who's a very, you know, famous comic and writer, and and um, he says, but you've never had that issue, have you? I said, no, I've never even been drunk. He goes, so you went through all this trauma without chemical assistance? And I said, yes, and he goes, that's a way more interesting story. And that's way, every like the other side has already been done. And since it's not authentic to you, how did you survive all of this? So now I'm in a panic as a writer usually does. <laughs> Cause why not? Why not panic? <laughs> it's not like I have a deadline or anything. I self-inflicting wounds so i was just wondering <laughs> if i should get a amateur but i don't know where else to go i don't know what to do and i don't even really know if this is a question i'm just kind of floundering thanks a lot emma <laughs> so so your question is should you get a dramaturg yes i think so something i don't i don't know where to go or how to flush out um how I actually did survive this trauma without chemicals, even though I did it. I don't know if this makes yeah, any sense. I, I, yeah, it, it does make sense. I tell you, there are two things going on here, Kimmy. There's you and there's your play. Yes. We're talking about your play. Okay. Yes. This is your work we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. While, while your life is very important and everybody's lives here is very important, I'm here to talk to you about your work. So you. what you have gone through as a person is very important. And, and you know, you, 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 how you got through what you got through, how you got through it is a very important question. But I am not in any way equipped to answer and, and, and work you through, help you through those questions. OK, just so let's be let's be clear. I didn't want to help with that. I was just trying to how's my character going to get through it without. Like, right. I don't even know how to, how to so use my about, life as a tool to help my character. Like I said, I want to talk about your work. Yes. Okay, sorry. Gonna, no, no, no. It's, it's okay. I just, I just don't want to do, don't want anybody to assume or, or think that I am presenting myself as a psychologist or, or anything like, like that. I'm, I'm totally not. So we can talk about your play though. And we can talk yeah, about yeah. what you might need to work on your play. Yes, um, please. And maybe a dramaturg would be helpful. Maybe a group of actors would be helpful. I think what's the most important thing that would be helpful is to keep the focus on your work when you're talking to, when you say gather a group of actors, what do you need? You need the main character and then three other characters? Is that, is that right? It's um, How many uh, characters in the, play? the protagonist, the pedophile, um, her reflection, and then two um imaginary friends and there are like two other auxiliary uh characters but they could just be doubled up by whomever is already there mm -hmm. so what do you how many actors would you need if you had five five okay yeah. great so you know they don't even need to be actors they can be friends you can have five friends actors might be better though because then again it would keep the focus on your work Right. Not on your personal stuff. And we all have personal stuff that we're going through, but it, I feel like it's best when we're working on our work to focus on the work. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So yeah. if you if you hired or gathered together five actors, right, and a director, and perhaps a dramaturg or a director who could also do dramaturgy, do a double duty there, and gathered them together, perhaps um hired them in some fashion or offered trades or offered a potluck or whatever had them over to your house or had them over on zoom and asked them to read through your play and talk with you about it as a play okay that could be very helpful okay that could be very helpful and, and how does one go about getting a dramaturg where would i no i'm find... talking about i'm talking about actors and okay director. i think okay. actors and a director is probably a good idea okay um because actors in their brilliance can help you with with dramaturgical questions i think the the point of 
I didn't go through it in real life. And so I need to write it so that it looks like my life. I'm not sure that that's a really valid argument, really. I appreciate that because- yeah, Again, it... Brecht was not a mother and he wrote Mother Courage. Shakespeare might've been a king, but he certainly wasn't all of them kings, <laughs> right? Okay. So we have to just be, you know, be, be conscious. Like we need to keep our eyes on the work. Oh, thank and when the personal starts coming in, if it's helpful, great. If it's not, let's set it aside and allow it its own time to be discussed and, and work through with the professionals that are specific to that challenge. I answer. so appreciate that because it's really been banging around in my head. And I don't typically like to talk about, you know, what I went through. It was it was more of I see how so many of us have all these characters in our head that are banging around trying to make sense out of things. And I guess I was trying to, it was more an exercise in, in describing the inner turmoil that we go through and use dark humor as a way to cope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Sounds great. But I think, do you, do you know how to get in touch with five actors or is there some, you know get you need yes. five actors okay great yes thank you and so and, and a person who can serve as the director slash dramaturg yes you can give your play a reading and then talk about it as a piece of theater okay okay yes thank you so much you're welcome love you mean it <laughs> thanks John. thank you thank you thanks kimmy um lou you're up next Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to see you. Thank you so much. Um, this is really, I'm going to keep it short. This is an appreciation post I want to share with you and the group because a piece I've been working on as an essay in this room for a couple of years was published this week. And I don't know the protocol, um, but I'd love to share it and pop it in the chat. But um, it's an essay about my mom, which has, she's shown up here a few times and my relationship to her. And it's in a dream place that I've been wanting to be published for a really long time. And I've been working on it probably as long as I've been in these rooms. And I have other projects and longer projects, which we've talked about, but this is out in the world. And I have it to thank everybody here and especially USLP for the space and the support and the navigation that made this really personal story be something that a place wanted to publish and put in the world. And I'm just really proud of it. So it's not the normal question and answer, but I wanted to just say that because I feel a deep appreciation for you we're and everybody. Doing a dance. Eh, eh. <laughs> we're doing a dance. Yeah, girl. Yeah, Thank that's you. Fantastic. Lou. We're so proud of you. Thank you. So I'm proud of you. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And it's like we I've brought questions here about, you know, should I care about the marketplace and what people think? And and let me tell you, like, I've really drunk the Kool-Aid on. I don't care. I just want to make things I believe in. But I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that it felt really good <laughs> to have some outside, you know, pat on the back. So I'll take it and keep yeah. working. Yeah. But I'll drop it in the chat. But it's just it's just appreciation. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Def, drop it in the chat. Thank you. Ooh, all right. Ooh. Melania? Hello, Susan Lori. Hello, everybody. Hey, Melania, how are you? Fine. I would like, well, I am listening to all of this, and I think that I have some answers, but I would like to, to hear from you. There was a person this last week that, you know that I do my work yes. and show up, and yes. I did my best. And this is a person that I, I love a lot and told me that what I am doing is a hobby. Like oh. it's, it's a hobby. And yes, and I don't know why, but it got to me like very deeply. And I, I try to say no, but, but they don't pay you. So it's a hobby. And there was this. And I, I try not to enter to the conversation because I, I could feel that I was feeling very badly <laughs> inside myself. So I put a stop that I don't want to have this conversation. But there is something inside of me that is still, you know, ruminating the, these words. And I would love to hear from you. What do you think about this? 
because I I show up to my work and I do it. With, I know, girl. No, go ahead. You go, go coach. No, go yes, ahead. and I do it with all my heart. And I know that money in this society that we live in it's important because it's, you know it's a necessity. Right, right. But to me, it's not that if I receive the money, it's going to be more important or less important. This is my right. heart, and I am really like breathing through my words, you know, it's something that I need to do, that I love to do. And right. I am learning how to show up to it without being a cruel judge of myself, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And this space is being so important to me, your thoughts, your kindness, all the community here. And when this happened, it was tough and mm. it hurt me. So I would like mm. to know what, what, what Girl, are you I would, you know, I mean, there are, there are times, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not a physically violent person, but there are times when I'm, I am, I entertain the, uh, the notion that I might go and hang out with you one day, meet your friend and slap them. I'm just, in, you know, become a playwright, <laughs> I make up things, you know what I'm saying? Um, there, there's really, I mean, for those of us who, who work hard, and who apply ourselves and are constantly showing up. I mean, Milani, I remember, I mean, I'll tell you what, put, they said something, right? Okay, mm -hmm. your job is to say what you know to be true, right? Mm -hmm. What you know to be true. And, I, and if you can't remember everything, we'll remind you of some things. When I did watch me work for like, what, 12 years, 13 years, whatever, I was in the lobby of the public theater and girl, you would, tweet your questions in we didn't even know what you looked like you were some <laughs> person named melania we got a lot of mileage out of that name we were joking with you you were, were there every single week mm -hmm. you were one of the people who was there every single week you were working you were asking some really amazing questions you were reaching some beautiful milestones mm -hmm. okay you you were one of those people okay and those of you who were there too like Crystal and Jim and other folks, right? You know, Melania was was always showing up. That's number. That's one of the things you can remind yourself, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, and this is kind of uh, might be sound religious. I don't care. They ain't on the throne. They ain't on the throne. Okay. Do you understand your gift comes from the higher power? And whoever said that to you is not the higher power, thank you very much. They're not on the throne. And no matter how far we go with our, our work, our careers, the things we love to do, there's always gonna be some, excuse my language, motherfucker who tries to say some shit to make us feel bad <laughs> about what we do passionately and beautifully and with great devotion, right? Mm -hmm. The people, Melania people have said similar shit to me recently okay and i just say to myself you are not on the throne okay god is on the throne Amen. and you ain't that they are not the source of your power they are not the source of your beauty that person who said that mean thing is not the source of anything except some bullshit and they're mm. an asshole <laughs> and i know and if you love them okay i'm not i'm not diminishing that i'm not mm -hmm. discounting them i'm just saying that people who have the need to say unkind things to those of us who work and who show up and who are dedicated to beautiful things, you know, that you just need to know that often, sometimes people who love us say, say some fucked up shit. Mm -hmm. they, they are not on the throne. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. Not, and a hobby what i mean i don't even know because somebody looked that up in, in the dictionary online i mean what a hobby that means that that means that you're just a, a dilettante that means that you're that means that you i mean what they're trying to say is like you suck at it you're yeah, some bullshit you know what i mean like oh you're you're not important you're not one of the important people. yes you are you're important look at you how much you've done Look mm -hmm. at you, and you have you have you have daughters. Is am I right? Yes, yeah, three. three, three, three. Whoa. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got one child, and girl, let me tell you, 
how I got my work done with one child. I don't know. Crystal's laughing. Crystal's got children, right? Those of us who have other people, whether they're children or parents or whomever, or spouses, to take care of, we know how hard it is to get our work done. When we have children, especially children, you got three kids and you get your work done. It's true. So, Thanks. you know, don't, you know. Oh, for some reason, they needed to be unkind to you. Mm. You know, bless their heart. Bless, bless them. Just, you know, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but also know that you're you you're in you're in you're in good company. There there are people who who say mean things to those of us who who shine brightly, my sister. And if you're shining brightly and you're carrying yourself with some kind of dignity, and you're looking around at everybody you meet with something. Lo- that resembles love and you tend to have more compassion than most people there are going to be people who need to take you down a notch mm. you know and and you know hey i, I thank god for you you are yeah, well thank god attention. for you thank god for you okay yes yes when we will continue to be blessings to each other that's what amen. we're here for right amen. amen yes i know amen that's right that's right. Okay. And whatever, you know, spiritual higher power mm-hmm. percent thing you believe in, it's all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all deities are welcome here. Yes. Oh, yes, man. definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I, I thank God for you. Um, yeah. You know. Um, likewise. Likewise. Yes. Okay. I, I, I really, I really believe that Jesus Christ brought you to my life. And I tell you, it's. Yes, you and you, your you words, your kindness, this community, you are so important to me, and you are in my heart, in my prayers every day, and there this, you what you're saying to me now, it's like a hug, you know, I, yes. I need yeah. it, I need it, yeah. so thank you. Thank you, thank you. Remember when, Chris, Crystal, I remember when you were going to a reading, and you said, how do I show up as a professional, and we said, maybe show up as an amateur. <laughs> not to show up as someone who does it for love what a professional like a hooker right i mean sure. i'm an amateur i do it for love i don't do this for money i don't do this for money you know what i'm saying right yeah. oh, especially these days i mean these days gee things are so you know turn on any news channel Oof, horrible. they're so unkind Oof. you know the least we can do is like give a little bit more love to each other right so and you might have to love that person from a distance melania hmm. i'm just you know i got people in my life that i go i love you but i'm gonna love you from a distance because you know they can't help it yes boundaries no boundaries yes ma'am yes yeah. ma'am that's what i'm talking about yeah okay. thank you <laughs> thank you so much melania um, it looks like we have a few hey, minutes left, so we have Crystal's time got her hand up. more questions. From the Adams family. <laughs> I think Crystal's got Hi. Hi. Hey, girl. How you doing? I'm well. Good to see you. It is so good to see you. At least life has been kicking my butt. Let's just oh, see. <laughs> just from like, you know, you know, I found out I have to move and like, oh, oh. You know things with school and the kids and like just everything's just like all over wow. the place and um it's it's uh it, it it's just it's just a very crazy time right now but um i've been trying to like you know push my short film that was the thing i was supposed to try to film mm-hmm. uh this summer it didn't work out because i didn't have enough funding right. and then um i met someone who was very interested mm-hmm. and is still very interested in pushing this this film and okay. yeah the thing was you know we had met up a, a second or th- uh uh on saturday it was and um one of the things this person said was that like that threw me off that was kind of like oh gosh is this going to be a deal breaker mm-hmm. was that you know the consumer or whoever is interested in buying this film or paying or paying uh giving to this film um, it's gonna want to see either violence or sex, 
And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> he, you know, because it takes place in Paris and it takes place in New York and it's like, Paris, what do you think Paris is? It's love, it's romance, it's sex, it's this, it's that. And I was like, yeah, but that's not where the story is. That That's not what I wrote, you know? Mm -hmm. And the whole thing though, it's like, you know, like, you know, it, it won't sell basically it won't sell if that's not in there and i am and i and i was like well i i need to i need to digest this and kind of think through this and i'm stubborn and i know i'm hard-headed i know i'm hard-headed i'm not gonna put that in there because it doesn't make sense because there's not enough of a relationship between either of the characters for that to happen because it's it doesn't just the way the story is it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. right but I kind of second guessed my story and was like, is there enough going on? Is it interesting enough? Do I need to create more conflict? Do I need to r r ramp up something to make it more over? Like, like, do I need to like, oh, I felt like I needed to overcompensate for what I have already. Like, do I need to write, not write more pages, but like, inject something more to make it more something that you know would take the place of like oh just throw a sex scene in there you know mm -hmm. and uh it just it 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 just it kind of took me down a notch with like all the work i've been working on trying to get this film like a, a lot a long a while and like i've been putting my heart and soul into it it's you know what i've been putting all my energy in mm -hmm. because I really want to make this film and um it just it just it just it like Melania it kind of just hit home a little bit because it was mm -hmm. like you're telling me that my you know no one's gonna want to see this unless I put it unless I make it some kind of commercialized you know stereotypical view of what people want to see but I'm I'm like but I I, when I first wrote this, I was like, but what I have is, I thought it was good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. you know. Um, What's great, Crystal, is that you're, you're sticking to what you know is right. And at the same time, you're trying to hear the note underneath the note, which is really a mark of real artistic maturity, I think. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you're saying, I don't want to put sex. I mean, that, it's stupid. Paris and New York, and that's all Paris and New York about sex and violence. Well, geez. Okay. Okay. Well, that's kind of, that's a limited worldview. And for you to look at the work and go, but maybe there's something I am missing in this story. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You know what I mean? Um then it could either it could go either way. Maybe you're missing something, or maybe you're not. Maybe that's not the right producer. You know, maybe mm -hmm. that's not the right producer. Um, I mean, there are other ways to produce your work. You could self-produce. You could, you know, do GoFundMe. You could, you know, do kind of a self-producing thing. You don't necessarily have to have to um, work with this person. Mm -hmm. um what you so you met with this person on saturday you said Is yeah like, like uh and that wasn't ago? the first time i met them but okay okay yeah. okay okay um but we've because, been in communication often uh -huh. because it because I, I i wonder if why don't you read the script over and ask yourself is there another beat is there something i'm missing from this that could be there that's not sex or violence maybe there's just a as they say um you know producers use all kinds of language a tightening of the noose just to tighten things up a little bit is there a thickening of the story that i might be missing mm -hmm. is there a a, a, a more is there something that can make it more intense you know what okay. i mean um so they're not are, are this are to put it a different way are the stakes high enough you know, a lot of times a sex scene or a violent act 
sometimes makes, oh my God, the stakes are really high, you know? The two naked bodies, stakes are really high suddenly, or someone's stabbing someone, the stakes are really high, you know? But ask mm -hmm. yourself, are the stakes high enough? You, do you, you know what I mean when I say mm -hmm. that? Okay. Yeah. Ask yourself, yeah, ask yourself that question. Am I am I coming in to the story at the right point? You know, you see what I mean? Or am yeah. I coming in too early and then it's a long ramp up to the story and then it kind of just makes a little bit of a hill, right? If I came in a little later and made it more intense, is there something I can do to intensify the story? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are the people agreeing in every scene? Okay. Are the wants, the, the characters' desires focused enough? Are they really going for what they want? You okay. know, here's yeah. Emma's favorite thing to, to focus on, what the characters want. Right. You know what I mean? Are the characters yeah. really going for what they want? Like 150%, or are they going like 30%? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you see what I mean? So, so yeah. there's a note underneath that note that maybe the script isn't yet intense enough so you can that's what we do all the time as artists we take a really a note that's not so helpful and we listen to what we translate it into something that might be much more helpful to mm -hmm. us okay. okay yeah okay yeah i can do that but, but listen to your gut no sex scene no violent scene but maybe there's something else Maybe you need to amp the whole story up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And don't get discouraged. Those aren't those aren't necessarily bad notes. They're just not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is very helpful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, 604. Oh, 604. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're just a little bit over time but thank you so much everyone uh, another wonderful discussion as always i will see you same time same yeah. place next week thank you thank you <laughs> have a great week bye, bye.